Today we're going to be talking about microscopes and specifically taking a look at this, the Andon Star AD409. Now I have a microscope already, it's an Ekin scope, it's actually there in the background and that's an optical microscope with a digital camera and I've been using that on the channel for some time, showing you things such as board repair and other kinds of content. However, Andon Star reached out and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at this and I was really keen on seeing how this holds up compared to the optical scope. So what I'm going to do today is walk you through this, its features and capabilities, and then at the end I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Now just to be clear before we move forward in the video, Andon Star did reach out to me and have sent me this microscope for free. However, they have not paid me to make this video. They have not seen it before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts will always be entirely my own. Just because I've been sent something for free does not influence my opinion. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a closer look at the unit itself and then I'll walk you through its features and capabilities. Okay, so as I've said, what we've got here is the AD409 portable digital microscope. Now, what we'll do is we'll do a quick unboxing. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. We'll get it all put together and then I'll give you a proper overview of the device itself. But I did want to show you what it comes like when you actually get it. So if we lift the lid on the box, you'll find inside a set of instructions on the top, which is available in multiple languages. This also walks us through the settings and everything as well from the looks of it. So we'll take a closer look at that in a minute as well. Lifting there, we will find the built-in screen. Now, this one here, I believe, is the 10-inch model, which means it gives us a big display to be able to see what we're doing. As I mentioned at the start, I do have a bench microscope, which is a proper sort of optical microscope. However, the nice thing with this is not only can you see everything on the display, but it also has outputs as well, which means if we just look around it, let me just get it out of the bag that it comes in. If we lift it out, we can see that there should be ports located on it somewhere. There we go, hiding down at the back there. So there you can see we've got the ports which give us HDMI, we've got a USB port, our SD card slot, as well as another port there. We'll take a look at what they are a bit more later on in the video. Now you can see We've got the head of the microscope there itself, which is already fixed to the back of the device. So again, with the portability, you can see that that rotates around. That then gives us the unit and then it will go in a stand and that's going to allow us to use it as a proper scope. Looking around in the rest of this, we've got our remote controller for controlling the device. We've got a plug, now UK for me, and they've shipped a UK plug in the box, which is very nice. Obviously, you'll get the plug for your specific region. USB cable for connecting to a computer. HDMI cable as well, very nice to see included in the package. A remote control, which plugs in for controlling the device itself. So it's got some buttons on there too, very nice to see. And then if we lift this out, we'll find some additional pieces in here. Let me just pop that out the way. So we've got what looks to be part of the stand. There we go. That looks like the adjustable element. There we go. So that is where the microscope goes into. This is what gives us our vertical adjustment and then this must mount to the base plate which is down here. There are the screws for that. And then if we lift that out we can then see the base itself. There we go, there's the screw holes for mounting it on. We've got the integrated LEDs, which is nice to see. Power input for them on the back there. And again, we've got the cable for controlling that too. So what I'll do is I'll get it assembled and we'll take a look at it once it's up and running. Okay, so as you can see, we've now got the unit set up. Now, I'm just going to walk you over the main features and specifications again. So, this is the 409 model, which has that 10.1 inch 1080p LCD display. It has a 4 megapixel camera that allows you to record Ultra HD, which they're calling 288 by 2160, up to 24 frames a second. You've got Quad HD up to 30 frames a second, Full HD up to 60 frames a second, and even 720p up to 120 frames a second. It can take stills of a resolution of 4032 by 3024 and it records them in JPEG format and it records the normal file recording via the built-in SD card slot in MPEG-4. 
Now, as I said earlier, the monitor has the whole built-in lens and camera system. The stand allows you to adjust the position of this. There's actually two positions available on this. I've got it in the higher one here, but you can also put it in the lower one up here as well, getting you in closer. And then you've got the focus adjustment here on the barrel of the lens, allowing us to get the image absolutely perfect. We've got two built-in LEDs for illuminating the subject. And then there's these little metal clips down here that will hold the PCB in place, allowing us to hold whatever it is we got under there, whether it be electronics or anything else, just to stop it moving around if we wanted to. Now, as I've said, it does give you a whole host of adjustment options depending on what you want to do. So the stand allows you to adjust the height. Now, obviously, if you want a higher working height with less magnification, you can do that. You can see I've increased it there. And then if I just resume the lens with the focus adjustment, there we go. You can see we can focus in. It gives us a nice amount of working clearance. If you're going to be doing soldering, you can see easily there on the display. But if you did want to get in closer, you can do that easily simply by adjusting it down, refocusing the lens, and that allows you to get in exactly the level you want it to be. Now, controlling this is fairly straightforward. We've got the remote controller, which they included, as I showed earlier. We've got this little remote on the side, which controls the LED brightness. So we can do that via this, and we can turn the unit on and off via the power button as well. And then you've got all of the options and settings within the main display. If I press and hold the menu button, this will bring up the main settings menu. So we've got the resolution options. So if I go into there, you can see we've got the Ultra HD P24, Quad HD P30, and all of the other resolutions. We've got the exposure exposure settings, record audio option, date stamp option, time-lapse recording, sharpness, the ability to freeze the display, contrast and color settings. If we go back in, we then also have the main menu option. So in here, we have the option for the Wi-Fi functionality because this unit does have Wi-Fi built in, allowing you to connect it to your PC via their software. And rather than use the HDMI output, be able to actually view the image on the display. We've got grid line settings, time and date settings, our mains frequency options for the lighting, our format, as well as our default settings. You then got the up and down arrows that allow us to digitally zoom in on the image. So if we want to get in closer, we can do that with the digital zoom option as well. And you can see it allows you to get even closer if you do want additional clearance down here. Obviously, using digital zoom is going to have an effect on the image quality. But I will be honest, the image on this is just so good, being able to use that digital zoom is going to get you out of a tight spot if you did need to get in a bit closer. You can then zoom out on the display like that. And again, you can do that on the remote controller. We've then got the OK and our record buttons allowing us to record. So for instance, if I press OK, it'll start recording to the SD card. But if I press that again and press the menu button, we can then scroll through to the stills option or go to playback and then go back to our recording. Now, just showing you the cable and the stand setup, as I've said here, is that adjustment for increasing the height of the unit. And you've then got a lock wheel on the back there, allowing you to fix it in place if you didn't want it to move. As I've shown, I've got it in the high position here, but you can put it in the lower position up there as well if you want to get it more zoomed in. And then you've got our cable setup. So we've got a power cable for the monitor going into the USB port. We've got a DC jack port here, and that all goes into this little remote. And then that's powered off via the USB connection which is included with it. You can either use the included adapter or you could plug it into any other USB device that you wanted to plug it into as well. Next, we're going to put it through its paces, take a look at some PCBs, and then I'm going to share with you some thoughts on the display, but I'll also get it hooked up to HDMI as well. One thing to note, though, if you are using it via HDMI, you do lose the built-in display, so you can't have the display and the HDMI output, but I will use the HDMI recording just to be able to show you the quality that you can get from this unit. Okay, now I've currently got the scope hooked up to my PC via the HDMI output. We've got a board underneath at the moment and it's set to the maximum visible height. This is at least 200 mil. I haven't measured it exactly. And that is the sort of most zoomed out you're going to be able to get this. Just to give you some idea on scaling, this PCB is 32 by 32. It's a HD zero whoop board. So that is sort of the available area at maximum you have 
under the board. Now, as I've said, we've currently got this on the HDMI. We're not using the internal recording. We'll take a look at that in a minute. I have noticed when using it on HDMI, obviously there's a little bit of rolling shutter effect, which is to be expected, but I'm also seeing a little bit of effect as a result of interlacing and we'll take a look at that in a minute as well it's mostly visible when we zoom in what i will say though is i'm not seeing that in the recorded footage on the internal sd card i'm only seeing that via the hdmi but you can see a little bit of rolling shutter there now if we take a look at how much we can zoom in i'm just going to scroll it down the stand i'm going to go to about 100 mil of height which is about there let's just refocus it there you go so there you can see and we focused it in and now you can see that interlacing effect a bit more there it may simply be down to the settings between my capture card and uh the unit but you can see it a little bit when moving rolling shutter is less evident now and it's more just uh interlacing but you can see the kind of zoom level you get on the unit i have to say the overall image quality on this is very, very good, especially through the monitor. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute, but overall it is very, very good. If I just swap PCBs and we're going to swap it for this, which is the new H7 Mini from Hollybro. This is the version 1.3. Just to give you an idea of how it looks, you can see all the components look absolutely fantastic, nice and easy to see. This is probably here the lowest working height I would be comfortable with, but that is absolutely no problem at all. If I get in, I can get in with my tweezers. Oh, we've got a bit of a hair there, so we'll get him off. But I've got no problems at this height at all. What we'll do next is we will hop over to the internal SD recording and show you what that looks like. Okay, now I've switched over to the onboard recording. I've got it in QHD because this is 30 frames a second and that's pretty much what I do all my videos in. It will go to that higher resolution, but I think this QHD is a nice place to be. That higher resolution is limited to 24 frames a second and that's going to give me some issues. So I'd rather stay like this. So again, we've got the same PCB under there at the moment. We've got this new flight controller, the H7 Mini from Hollybro. This is version 1.3 three as you can see there just looking around the display just showing you how that looks looking at it there i have to say now looking at this on the internal screen it does look absolutely fantastic it really really does the image quality is just so clear it, it's dramatically better than I get from my bench scope. And I will compare that in a minute. We've now swapped over to the HD zero board. Again, going in, just taking a look. And as I've said, we can zoom in much closer than this. But for me, this would be a good working height. I'd have no issues working at this height. So if I just come in with some tweezers, I can see now where are we aiming for? We're going for there. There we go. So I'd be easily able to get under here. No problems at all. Moving over to here. So if I wanted that cap, we've got that little filter down there. It looks like an RF filter. Yeah, yeah we've got another one there. Let's let's go in. Yep, yeah, we can we can do them. We can grab them. I've got not I've not got hot air at this moment, but I've got no problems getting under here. There's the power amplifier. And at the height I'm at here, I'd have no problems working at this height at all. I could easily get under there with the iron if I wanted to but it just shows the kind of quality that you can get from the internal camera. And as I've said, the display just looks absolutely lovely. Now, just to demonstrate that zoom in feature as well, as I've said on the digital zoom. So what we're gonna do is zoom in with the digital now. Again, we're going to start to see some grain kick in because obviously with any digital zoom, there is losses but it does just show what is available. So if you didn't want to decrease your working height, you can use that digital zoom if you want to. Let me just find myself. There we go. So we've got a couple of hairs there from uh, this board's had some work on it. So you can see, oh, we've picked up a solder ball. Look at that. But you can just see now what's available. We can easily read that. We can see that as well. 
Now, another nice feature on this scope is the ability to invert the image. So if we just turn that on, now you can see that the whole color scheme has changed. And it's a nice feature that just helps with viewing certain things on the board. So you can now see that labeling is much easier to read. You can see 5v4 down there the code down there, 0C0477. And it can help as well with reading part codes on chips. There we go. So if I just tilt that up, I might just need to adjust the focus slightly just for this because I'm tilting the chip up. But there you can easily see now it's the PA5542. If we do the same on some of the DiviMath chipsets, you can see now we can easily read DM6300. And then we've got the Toshiba chipset, which is the 358748XBG, which is the MIPI camera interface. And again, if I tilt it there, we can read on that voltage regulator. And it's just a real nice feature that does help with being able to identify components, but also see PCB tracks. So if we just focus it on the board, you can see that it does show the tracks there a little bit easier than it might in the other way. So let me just invert it back. There you go. Whilst you can see the tracks, you can't actually see everything. So again, it's just another nice feature that they've built into this unit as standard. Now, I just want to quickly show you how this scope looks compared to my bench scope. I have an Ekins optical microscope, which in itself is very good, but the camera setup on it is just not great. And I've had real trouble getting it to look good on camera. Now, I've just aligned this board just to show that I see as pretty much full frame. And again, I'm going to move around. Please, again, ignore that alias in that you're seeing there a minute. That isn't on the SD card footage. I'm only getting that on the uh, HDMI output, but this just gives you an idea of how it looks via that HDMI output as well, just to compare. And what I'll now do is just hop over to the bench scope and we'll do the same thing. Okay, so I'm now on the bench scope and I've hopefully got it set up to look pretty much the same. So just to look around this, just to give you an idea. Now, visually, I much prefer how the Andon star looks, I'll be honest. However, the optical scope is fantastic to work with as a microscope, but both are going to get the job done. For me, it really depends as if you're showing much on camera. I think if you're showing a lot on camera, the Andon star is going to do you really good. It's smaller. You don't have to worry about having space on the bench either. You can put it in the corner out the way. And if you're looking for a microscope to be able to just pull out and use, I think it's going to be a really interesting option for people. Okay, so it's time for me to share with you my thoughts on the Andin Star AD409. Now, just before I do that, though, I just want to be clear that Andin Star did reach out to me. They did send me this microscope for free. However, they have not paid me to make this video. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Now, I was aware of this product before it was sent to me. I've actually seen these microscopes and I was tempted to buy one before ordering my optical scope. In the end, the reason I went with the optical scope was because I thought it might actually be a better product for me. However, having spent some time with this, I actually think this suits me more than that one does. It has great image quality. That screen, 1080p, large 10 inches, is absolutely fantastic. The image quality from the 4 megapixel camera is very good. The focusing is nice and easy. And whilst it doesn't quite have the same levels of working height as the optical scope has, I think for someone who's doing basic board repair, a bit of SMD soldering here and there, but wants a microscope for inspection, this is probably going to be a better option overall. There are many nice features on this. I like the fact that it has that onboard SD recording, which is very good, better image than that one does with the built-in camera. And you have that built-in stand with the LEDs, just makes it a nice all-in-one compact package. And it runs off USB as well, which gives you options if you're out in the field. Whilst there's a lot to like, there are a few downsides to this as well. The stand does feel cheap. You've got to be careful. It has a habit of dropping if you don't have the brake on at the back. The LEDs are good, but they can get in the way if you're going to be doing a lot of soldering. You're probably going to want to try and come up with some form of ring light option for this. I think it would be better, but there's nothing here fundamental. And overall for the price, I think it's coming in at about $340 US, about £360 UK. I think you're getting a high quality microscope that will do what 99% of people need a microscope to do. And I'm going to be using this a lot more on the channel moving forward because for showing you guys stuff on the channel, I think it's a much better option 
than the bench one. Now, that's it from me on this one. I do want to say a big thank you to Andon Star for sending this one over. I think it's a great product. I will put a link to it in the description if you're interested in getting one. If you have found this video interesting, please do consider checking out the links in the description to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee as well. It's only through your support am I able to keep making content like this. And if you'd like to support us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, do let me know what your thoughts are on this microscope. If you've got any questions, put it in the comment section as well. I will try and answer it. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.